In an age of skyrocketing divorce rates, is it really possible to make love last? Welcome to the Falling in Love Forever Show with Drs. Barbara and Michael Grossman, the well-known relationship experts and best-selling authors of The Marriage Map Book. Each week, they share the latest information to help you enjoy your romantic partnerships so you can fall in love forever. Here are your hosts, Drs. Barbara and Michael Grossman. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Grossman. I'm an anti-aging specialist, and I love keeping people young and healthy. And this is my lovely wife. I'm Dr. Barbara Grossman. I'm a marriage and family therapist. And today we're going to talk about how to create more sexual intimacy in your marriage. And so to begin talking about it, I'm going to ask Dr. Barbara to say a few things. So body connection is very important for a couple. It's, it's um, uh, calming, it's nurturing, it's connecting. Couples uh, having regular sex live longer and they feel happier. And it's not a problem unless it's missing. And we want to promote um, an active sexual life for our, our couples. We, it's important to talk about um, what doesn't work because when it's working, there's no reason to talk about it. Um, sex doesn't work so easily when you have babies or even when you're trying to have babies. It can feel more like an ordeal than um, real self-expression and connection. When babies come, mom, the mom is so busy with babies hanging on her that um, touching and connection with her husband may not be so appealing. Then there's the management of the house and finding time to be together. That needs to be managed eventually so that there is important time for couples. But um, when, and when partners are in continuous conflict for whatever reason, um, makeup sex can be fun, but it doesn't fill in the gaps of the loneliness and um, sadness of the conflict. So what we suggest is that each couple, each partner takes responsibility for developing themselves and really taking their own life journey seriously and sharing and learning and continuously growing over time. And this allows a couple to constantly be connected and individuals. And that's how it was when you first met. You were different, you were individuals, but you had affinity. And as you evolve your personality over a lifetime, you keep renewing your relationship. And the excitement goes along with that. And so we, um, and we teach couples how to talk together in our class, Falling in Love Forever. It's an important skill to have, to share oneself, to share one's interests and values and how it touches you personally and so that you keep in touch with each other and keep the connection while you're growing. And that allows you to have chemistry forever is that what you had in mind yeah so there's a variety of things we need to do to maintain that sexual intimacy as dr barbara's describing these are very important things to keep in mind so for a man and woman as you get older there is the issue of the physiology. So when women go into menopause, 45, 55 years of age, their hormones change pretty suddenly and they may need to come to see me for help to balance out their, their hormones that are, have been lost, that are very important to maintain normal sexual functioning. For men, it's a more gradual process that can, over a period of years, it slowly gets less and less and less. It happens just like with a woman, but it's very slow to happen. Every 10 years, there's a lot less hormones for a man than they had 10 years earlier. But now there's the whole psychological aspect of maintaining sexual intimacy. And as Dr. Barber's describing here, you, you need to nurture those things that promote sexual intimacy for a variety of reasons. She described you live longer, you live healthier, but it also creates that joy of being together. That's so important. Now to maintain that sexual intimacy, it's a little different what a man needs and what a woman needs. And you've got to be aware that we have different 
makeups in our brain, in our hormones, that create different needs to be sexually turned on. For a man, a man needs to feel respected and appreciated for what he does in terms of respect. And he needs that respect to come from his woman. She has to appreciate him. When you criticize a man for what he does, it really hurts him. So I remember an example I share about is when um, fixing some phone wires. Back in the old days, we didn't have all these phones, but you had a wired phone in the house. And I, and I wanted to put the wire under the carpet because Barbara said it was an eyesore. She wanted me to put the wire that went from the bedroom into the bathroom and so on and to, and to make it look better. I said, sure, I can do that. So I picked up the carpet and I put it underneath and I tacked the carpet back down and took a bunch of hours, but I was proud of it. And I say to Barbara, hey, how does that look, sweetheart? And she looks at it and says, you know, the carpet is kind of rippled. Why don't we get someone who really knows how to do this? It's not one of my better moments. <laughs> so that hurts a guy a lot, turns a guy off says, I'm never going to fix anything around the house ever again. Go ahead and hire someone to do it. I'm finished. Because it hurts a guy. Guys are sensitive to doing things for their woman. He wants the woman to appreciate it. And ladies, you've got to realize that a guy is very sensitive about his ability to produce and accomplish for his woman. So you've got to thank and appreciate a guy for what he's doing for you. It's just very, very essential to what makes a guy feel like he wants to be with his woman sensually. Now later, you, after you appreciate the guy for what he does, then maybe a lady might say, oh, maybe we should do this and that and so forth. And, and, and then you make adjustments to what, but when you ask a guy to do something for you, your job is to thank him. Very important. For the woman, what's essential for a woman is that a woman needs to feel like she is desirable. She needs to feel like she's attractive to her man. Now, men want to feel attractive too, but it's not so critical to them. You know, your hair's not right, your clothes are not perfect. Yeah, it's no big deal. I mean, you want to look good, but for a woman, she wants to feel attractive to her man. So when a guy tells a woman, oh, you know, you're gaining weight or, you know, you, you then look kind of wrinkled, you know, you should do something, you know. That really hurts a woman. You don't want to say that to a woman. A woman wants to feel attractive to a man. She wants to feel like a man wants to spend time with her. He wants to pay attention to her. So, men, you have to listen to your ladies and, and learn what makes them feel like you really care about them, like you feel real attracted to them. They may say they like you telling them when you think they look good. Tell them, oh, you know, you look really bright today. I love those colors and your face looks really glowing. Wow, you look great. Thank you. Makes a woman feel really good. Like the, the guy she's with really likes being with her. And you got to ask her what turns her on, what makes her happy, what makes her feel really like you're having a great time together. And it's different than what you, the guy, may want to do. She may want to hold hands with you. She may want you to, you know, put your arm around her. She may want you to give her a massage. And there's all kinds of things that, that makes her feel like you're, you're, you like being with her and you're feeling like she's attractive. So that's real important to have that kind of chemistry. And don't think, guys and ladies, that you know what your partner wants to feel attractive and or respected. It's not exactly what you think, but you gotta listen to each other. Want to add anything, my dear? Yeah, I was gonna say that when I was a young wife with two young children, and I was overwhelmed with the schedules and demands that were never ending, I actually expected my husband to come home and love me up and and give me energy. Um, and instead, I watched his life develop and grow while I was cranky and dependent and waiting for him to love me. And um, that never worked. My uh, crankiness and, um, and complaining turned him off. 
And it wasn't until I, you know, it took years for me to wake up and realize that I needed to uh, start generating my own life and my own interests and become an individual again. And that's what got us on the road together and um, reconnecting with that energy. It's important that you, you understand the role of personal development in keeping a partnership exciting and connected and sexually invigorated. Uh, we want you to um, we want you to uh, t take that as a project and um, consider learning with us at Falling in Love Forever. It's a course that involves um, four sessions plus an additional um, uh, bonus session, and we teach skills that has you learning and growing and getting back on track together. So it's a real pleasure to spend time with you. We're going to uh, continue to have these. Um, little inspirational talks because marriage and the quality of your relationships is the single most important factor in longevity after the age of 50. It's more important than anything else, than cholesterol, than eating healthy, than exercising. The quality of your relationships is the most important factor for the day. So, be aware of that. And can I add, the quality of your relationships is the quality of your life. And we want you to enjoy that. Yes. Well, thanks for being with us. We look forward to being with you again. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching the Falling in Love Forever show with Drs. Barbara and Michael Grossman. Join us next week for another informative discussion to help you keep your love alive. Be sure to visit us at themarriagemap.com or find out about our relationship classes at fallinginloveforever.com.